Hey guys, it's Jenny here and today I have my July wrap up for you guys. So these are what I have for physical books um, and then I did read three ebooks but they were all poetry collections. So I think I'm going to start with those. So the first poetry collection that I read was Love Her Wild by Atticus Poetry right here. Um, this, I actually stumbled across this author one day I was looking for a caption for an Instagram picture and I found his, I found um, pictures with his quotes format formatted on them and I'm like wow I really love these quotes and I kept seeing more and more of them and I just fell in love with his work and then I finally found the name he's this anonymous poet um he's so like mysterious he's completely anonymous nobody knows his name even when he goes to like book talks and signings he wears a mask like nobody even knows how old he is so he just goes by the name Atticus Poetry um and I read his first collection and I really loved it I gave it a five out of five stars it was just so I don't even know like I don't even know how to put it it was just so raw and spiritful I guess it was just really beautiful and I really loved reading his work and I just really loved the way he had with his words um so yeah I really want to get my hands on a physical copy and I also really want to pre-order his new collection that's coming out um so the second poetry collection that I read was The Princess Saves Herself in this one by Amanda Lovelace um this one I thoroughly enjoyed um, I gave this one a five stars as well. I just really liked how relatable some of the poems were. Um, and they were feminist, but they were also just equalist. They were... <sighs> I don't even know how to put it, but they were so honest, I guess. And I just really enjoyed her work. Um, and I really want to pick up The Witch Doesn't Burn in this one. And she also has another one coming out to make monsters out of girls and then she's got another one in the works that I think the mermaid doesn't lose her voice in this one. I just really want her books in my collection because I really did like them. So then the third one I read was Milk and Honey by Rupi Carr and this one was a bit more less relatable for me mostly because I have never gone through a sexual assault or anything along those lines. Or really anything romantically so this one was kind of just a little bit less relatable for me but regardless I understand how people relate to her work and really do enjoy it and I gave it a four stars simply because I just found it less relatable for me but I really did like her way with words and how brutally honest she was so gave that one a four stars so then um, I finished up an audiobook, so I finished The Sun and Neptune by Rick Riordan. I obviously gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. Um, this is book 2 in the Heroes of Olympus series, which is a spinoff from Percy Jackson, and I just love this series. This is actually probably my least favorite in that spinoff series, but regardless, I still really enjoyed it. Um, and actually, I did enjoy my reread of that one um, more than any of the other times I read it, so yeah the next thing i read was reread i should say is dumplin by julie murphy um basically this centers on a plus size girl living in tennessee i want to say um pretty sure it's tennessee could be texas i forgot again um but however she um Buena Vista. Mm. So, Clover City. I always forget. But, anyways, she is the self proclaimed fat girl. She is dubbed Dumplin' by her former beauty queen mother. Um, she's always been at home in her own body. But then she meets a boy and he starts taking an interest into her. And she, she, instead of finding um, self-assurance in this newfound relationship, 
she starts doubting herself and finds a falter in her self-confidence. Um, so she, she decides to try to take back her confidence by crushing the stereotypes and joining the local beauty pageant. And along the way, she gets this whole band of girls who are bullied at the school to join her. And it's just, it's such a powerful book and it's so funny at some points. Um, and I just overall really enjoyed this. I obviously gave it a five stars. This was my second time reading it. And I just, I loved it so much. So the next book I read was, let me make sure I took the thing out of this one, was Scythe by Neil Shusterman. So I read this for a 24 hour readathon and I really enjoyed this. Um, this basically centers in a world where there are no problems in today's society. There's no hunger, no disease, no war, no misery. They have conquered everything and even death. Like death is easily, even if you do die, you just get re brought back to life. And in order to keep the population in check, there are scythes, which are people whose sole job is to kill people to keep the population down. Um, so, it centers on two characters, Citra and Rowan, who are chosen to be apprentices to the Scythes. Um, they must master the art of taking life, knowing the consequence of failure can mean losing their own. <sighs> this book was so good. I mean, I will admit towards the middle, it started hitting a dead zone for me and I almost put it down. But once I got to, like, the end, I was so into it and... I just thoroughly enjoy this. I'm pretty sure I gave it a five stars, so I really need to get my hands on Thunderhead. <laughs> so the next book I read was To All the Boys I Loved Before by Jenny Han. This is basically about a girl named Lara Jean who writes a letter um, every time she's just getting over, every time she has a crush so intense she feels the need to write about it because she can't do anything else. And when she's getting over these crushes she writes them a letter, she dates it, stamps it, but then she never mails it. She puts it in a box in her closet and she has five of these letters. And then one day they all get mailed out to all of these boys that she wrote letters to. <laughs> and this was such a fun book to read. Um, I gave it a four stars solely because it was really cliche at parts and I didn't, I wasn't a big fan of the love triangle. I mean, I liked it, but like, I just feel like it could have been less dramatic, I guess. <laughs> so. But I really did like this and I love the family relationships that they had. So, four stars for that one. Next, I did a 24 hour readathon in honor of book two bathon. So, I the first book I read was The Wendy Project by Melissa Jane Osborne and Veronica Fish. Um, and basically, this is a twisted retelling of Peter Pan, where our main character, Wendy, um, Wendy Davies, she crashes her car and one of her brothers is goes missing after this accident. So there on after she has a mental disorder which leads her to see everybody surrounding her as a different Peter Pan character and to and she kind of has trouble differentiating fantasy with reality. Um, so everybody around her seems to resemble characters from Neverland. She starts to draw the Wendy project where she kind of just confuses fantasy with reality and oh this book was so good it's a graphic novel um and you kind of sort of see through the thing as you only get like a splash of color in each page and then towards the end when she starts coping with the sheer reality of it um it goes all the way to color and it's oh it was such a good book i was crying i gave it five stars um that was actually the first graphic novel i've ever read and i really enjoyed it so the next book I read was another audiobook, and I picked up The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. If you guys don't know what this is about, this is basically about the Roaring Twenties, a multi-millionaire rich guy named Jay Gatsby, um, has this unfaltering love for Daisy Buchanan. Um, I don't even know how to describe this. He um, has this lavish mansion, and he throws these lavish parties um, in hopes to gain her attention. And I don't even know how to describe it. Um, it doesn't even like tell you. It's just about the Roaring Twenties and it's so good. 
I really enjoyed it. Like, I don't even know why. I just love this story. So I'm pretty sure I gave this like a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Um, I don't remember why I knocked it down though. I truly can't remember, but I really enjoyed this. So the final book that I read in the month of July was My Heart and Other Black Holes by Jasmine Warga. <sighs> this book. Let me first start out by saying I gave this all the stars. It got five out of five stars. <sighs> it was so good. I am such a big fan of hard-hitting contemporaries that deal with mental illness or just hard-hitting subjects or just tear jerkers so this basically centers on two kids Azel uh, I forgot her last name Azel and Roman so both of these kids are highly depressed and they have gone through things that just make them genuinely want to die so um they're both obsessed with plotting their own death um things happen to both of them and they find each other through this um website called oh what's it called suicide partners so they make this pact and it's this is set over the course of a month um so they make this pact to die together and what ends up happening instead is that they form this bond um and show each other all the reasons that they should be living and oh my god this book had me sobbing it's so good I didn't expect to love it as much as I did but I really really loved it I gave this so many stars I was just so in love with the story and the characters <sighs> they were so cute you can like the way that grief was portrayed and depression and mental illness was portrayed was so spot on and so good I just was thoroughly impressed and I wish it like I don't even know I just wish I didn't read it so I could read it all over again if that even makes sense but I know this was super late but that was my July wrap up um, I hope you enjoyed overall I read one two three four five six seven physical books and three ebooks so ten in total um and i'm already kicking august off kind of slow but pretty good at the same time but thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed i will see you next time